the truth about Viking berserkers, their origins, training, and battle techniques. The Vikings have been claimed to be one of the most elite and fierce warrior culture in the history of warriors. These were the Norse warriors that once stood out for their battle fury and violence, popularly known as the Viking berserkers. But what were their origins? How did they become so fierce? What were their battle techniques? Continue watching the video till the end to know more. Hey everyone, and welcome back to yet another video from our channel. We hope you guys are doing extremely well. In this video, we'll be talking about the Viking Berserkers. We will be diving deep into every aspect of this topic. So if you are new to this channel, then make sure to hit the subscribe button. Now, without any further ado, let's hop right into the video. In the fierce warrior culture of the Vikings, there was one type of elite, almost possessed, Norse warrior that stood out for their battle fury and violence, the Viking Berserker. They were careless in their fury, leading many historians to think that they used mind-altering substances to hype themselves up for battle. Berserkers may have felt as though nothing could hurt them, and the English phrase berserk, usually describing a frenzied state of anger, comes from these Norse warriors. Viking berserkers existed as mercenaries for hundreds of years during the Scandinavian Middle Ages, traveling in bands to fight wherever they could, get paid, but they also worshipped Odin, and were associated with mythological shapeshifters. And eventually, Norse berserkers became so fearsome that they were entirely outlawed by the 11th century. Most of what comprised the life of a Viking berserker is a mystery because their practices weren't recorded in detail until the using mind-altered states in battle had been outlawed by the Christian church. At this time, Christian writers on a mission to condemn any sort of pagan traditions often gave biased, altered accounts. We do not know that berserkers were inhabitants of Scandinavia. It's written that they guarded Norway's king, Harald I Fairhair, as he reigned from 872 to 930 AD. The word berserker itself is derived from the Old Norse serker, meaning shirt, and bear, the word for bear, suggesting that a Viking berserker would have worn the hide of a bear, or possibly wolves and wild boars, to battle. But rather than wearing the skins animals, the stories told of the Norse warriors, who would be so enraged for war, they would literally become the wolves and bears to win the battles before them. Berserkers were originally thought to be named after a hero in Norse mythology who fought without any protective gear or bare skin. The nakedness of the berserker was in itself a good psychological weapon because such men were naturally feared. When they showed such disregard for their own personal safety, according to the National Museum of Denmark, the naked body may have symbolized invulnerability and was perhaps displayed to honor a war god. The berserkers were thus dedicating their lives and bodies to the battle. Although this imagery is fascinating, experts now think the term comes from wearing bear skins instead of bear skin. So it's likely that they got their name from wearing animal skin in battle. Artistic depictions of a Viking berserker showed Norse warriors wearing the skins of animals in battle. They may have felt like wearing the skins of perceived wild animals like wolves and bears helped increase their strength. They might have also thought that it helped them channel the aggression and brutality that hunting animals have when going after their prey. In 872 AD, Thorbjorn Hornklofi described how Norse warriors that were bear-like and wolf-like fought for King Harald Fairhair of Norway. Nearly a thousand years later, in 1870, four cast bronze dyes depicting berserkers were discovered by Anders Petter Nilsson and Erik Gustaf Pettersson in Åland, Sweden. These show the berserkers with armor, still other depictions show them naked. Nude warriors who are believed to symbolize Viking berserkers are seen on golden horns on display at the National Museum of Denmark. Berserkers first started getting their transformation into their wild trance by shivering, getting the chills, and chattering their teeth. Next, their faces became red and swollen. The rage set in soon after that. It wasn't until after their trance ended that the berserkers became physically and emotionally exhausted for days. Each Viking berserker likely did this with a substance that is believed to be Hyosiamus niger, to induce an extreme rage-filled state for battle. According to research by Karsten Fator, an ethnobotanist at the University of Ljubljana in Slovenia, known colloquially as henbane, the plant was used in potions to create psychoactive portions that would purposefully cause sensations of flight and wild hallucinations. This state has been variously claimed to involve anger, increased strength, a dulled sense of pain, decreases in their levels of humanity and reason. Fator explains, it is behavior akin to that of wild animals, including howling and biting on their shields, shivering, chattering of their teeth, chill in the body, and invulnerability to iron, swords, as well as fire. 
After taking these drugs, we can theorize that Viking berserkers would howl like the wild animals whose skins they wore. Then they would go fearlessly into the battle and kill their enemies with abandon. Although Fathor's research points to stinking nightshade as berserkers' drug of choice for many good reasons. Others have previously theorized that they used the hallucinogenic mushroom Amanita muscaria to get them into that raging altered state. The Viking berserkers may have been willing to wildly race into battle and face impending death because they believed something wonderful was waiting on the other side. According to Viking mythology, soldiers that died in battle would be greeted in the afterlife by beautiful supernatural women. Legends told that these female figures, who were known as Valkyries, would comfort the soldiers and lead them to Valhalla, the luxurious hall of the war god Odin. This wasn't a place for retirement and relaxation, though. Made of elaborate armor and weaponry, Valhalla was a place where warriors prepared to fight alongside Odin, even after their death. Beyond the immortal legends, the Berserkers' glory days were short-lived. Jarl Eriker Hakanarsson of Norway outlawed berserkers in the 11th century. By the 12th century, these Norse warriors and their drug-induced fighting practices had disappeared completely, never to be seen again. The berserkers' savagery in battle and their animal skin attire contributed to the development of the werewolf legend in Europe. It is unclear whether the berserker warriors wore bear and wolf skins into battle, or fought bare-chested, that is, without burnies or male shirts. Tapestries and other sources represent both possibilities. The berserkers were in the habit of raping and murdering at will in their host communities, thus going berserk. And in the Norse sagas, they were often portrayed as villains. In an old Norse poem, most of which dates from the 9th century, berserkers are recorded as the household god of Norway's King Harald I, Fairhair, reigned 872 to 930 AD. Originally, berserkers developed their own brotherhood of professional warriors who traveled around and took service with different chiefs. What distinguished them was that they had bears and wolves as totem animals and clad themselves in their skins, irrespective of whether it was a bear or a wolf. The warriors believed they were endowed with the spirit of the animal. Designs showing warriors clad in what could be bear skins occur among other places. On the torcelain plates from Erland, thought to date from the 7th century, in the Four Nalder sagas, sagas of the earlier times, and in several other sagas, the king's or the chieftain's guard is described as made up of berserkers, usually 12 in numbers. The berserkers often comprised an elite troop in addition to the guard or the army in general. In sea battles, they were usually stationed at the prow to take the leading point of an attack. In the Battle of Hafarsfjord, circa 872, they appear as shock troops for Harald Hjarfagre, fine hair, in groups of 12. The berserkers are spoken of as fearsome enemies to meet. They were often said to be so intoxicated by battle lust that they bit their shields, attacked boulders and trees, and even killed each other while they were waiting for battles to begin. A set of chessmen from the 12th century, found on the Isle of Lewis in the Scottish Ebrites, includes a chess piece of a warrior biting his shield. The title of berserker is thought sometimes to have been inherited from father to son, and other unknown examples of entire families of berserkers one such family, known from the sagas, is Egil Skallagrimsson, Egil's father, Skallagrim, Ugly Skull, and his grandfather, Kveldulf, Nightwolf, were also berserkers. The concept of berserk also turns up independently of berserker. The idea of going berserk could apply to more than just the members of a warrior brotherhood. Harald Hardrad, Hard Ruler, went berserk at the 1066 Battle of Stamford Bridge. For example, the expression is used in retaliation to warriors who are not thought to have been wearing any distinctive uniform of animal skins. Olav Harald's sons, berserkers, who wrecked the Battle of Stickelstad for him, are an example of this. And that's all for today. Did we miss out on anything? Do you have any other insights on this topic? Did you enjoy watching the video? Let us know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Well, that brings us to the end of this video. We hope that you've enjoyed watching the video. Please like the video if you've not already, and make sure to hit the subscribe button. Don't forget to press the bell icon to never miss another update from our channel. With that being said, let's meet in another one of these videos. Until then, see ya!